Hello there, I'm Lexani, a freelance illustrator and comic artist enthusiast, and today I'm going to be teaching you fun tricks of drawing and coloring jewelry. If you don't have any experience in art or you just want to see what I'm be doing, this is a great little video for you. But first, let's get a good look at your art program and what will you be drawing with. I like to ask a question so at the end of the video you too can learn something, so let's get to it. First off, before starting, I suggest looking up references online of actual jewelry and not already drawn up ones because then you'll either be copying someone else's work or get accused of stealing and by looking at actual images you can train your mind to learning details but bundling up pictures into one mood board really does help give an idea of what you would like and I kind of do this from time to time because it does actually improve on your art and it does help you to see what you would be like to put into it. For those of you who have a lot of trouble while making jewelry and have Clip Studio Paint, then hop on over to see the little icon where you'll be taken to the main page and scroll to assets, where you can search up tons of amazing brushes made by wonderful artists around the world. Now this is not cheating, this is simply working smart and not hard. This is meant to reduce stress and time for comic artists and illustrators who have time limits and especially perfect for us people attending schools. I attend college so this actually really does help me a lot. Once you get there, make sure to type in jewelry and then pick and choose what you might find interesting or want to try out. I like to go by this daily and support other artists out there by giving clippy points. It's something only in Clip Studio Paint you can do. I have custom brushes myself, but I like to help out the community as much as possible and support many artists out there. They take their time and effort to be making these brushes, but soon enough, when you get into pro level, you'll be able to make your own brushes and it's fairly easy. What you really need to start with is just a simple color brush, airbrush, and a blender, but I like to use a blur tool, but it depends on what kind of art style you want. Watercolors work just as well. Now to the sketching. I'm going to be doing copper, gold, and silver jewelry, so pay close attention. Remember, most necklaces and jewelry are three-dimensional, meaning there will be some hard shades and soft shades, which helps you give life to the illustration. Don't mind the S's, I have braces. Aha, oh, really, I can say it now. <laughs> what you're going to want to do is start sketching either what you chose or even a made up one, but for the purpose of this lesson, I'll be doing different ways of making jewelry and different kinds as well. First we'll be freehanding this and then the next one we'll be using a stencil. If you have Clip Studio Paint and want to follow along, then go right ahead, but you can follow along with anything, so don't worry and just do your best. It includes iPads, Procreate, Photoshop, anything. Right, let's start up with a real quick sketch and fill it in. Once you get the sketch in, now it's time for the colors. I did a quick copper, silver, and gold set of earrings so that you can compare and see the difference between the two. I'm simply going to be teaching you the idea of how to color it in. I did a quick coloring and here is what they look like now. Now when doing jewelry, the basic idea of wanting to stick with the medium color palette will be a good thing. Don't go too bright, leave that for the highlighting, and don't use black all the time when not necessary especially for shading unless that is your art style or preference but it isn't always necessary fun fact did you know that white isn't always for coloring but can be used for highlighting while using blue and purples can be for the white shadows instead this is used in pastel art and just like red you can use maroon and purple as a shadow now time to add our shades okay if you want a more nice looking gemstone 
I do recommend hopping on back over to Clip Studio Paint Assets page and looking up gems. Once we finish here, I'll show you how to properly put them in faster results. Once the shading is complete, you will want to highlight, but be careful where the highlight is coming from. Where is your source? Above? Below? Which side? For gold schemes, it's okay to use a bright yellow and white to bring out the other colors and making them pop. Try using orange for a shade on yellows. For white, a nice cool tone color will help bring life and a nice shaded energy into the necklace. Browns can work with gold as well, but it can also work on reds. Now as I said before, let's take on a pair of earrings and put a gem on it. What you are going to do is put the gem inside the earring or necklace of your choice by using the layer with the color only in the inside. You are then going to lock the layer, which means nothing with that will be affected. And then once you get into the layer, then you're able to use a clip. A clipping mask means that it'll only affect the one on the bottom of the layer. And once you do that, everything will look outside will not be affected, but the inside will look just like a nice little piece of jewelry, which is just beautiful. And it's really easy and really fast. A lot of web tuners actually use these kind of tools to help them process faster when it comes to on a schedule demand kind of thing. And it's really not that bad. It's actually quite smart. Finish up the drawing. Here you go. Looking good there. Almost there. Wow, that looks great. I'm sure you're getting the hang of this now, but practicing always makes perfect. Let's see some more examples. When and how to put detail. When creating a character, I'm pretty sure you want to draw necklaces or something something. Here's an original character of mine who likes to wear a chain necklace. If you're a comic creator or draw scenes from far away, then it's okay to not get in so much detail with jewelry. In fact, most of the drawing is focused on the scene and line work, but if you want to draw jewelry far from away, then a simple dot and details work just as great. Of course, the closer you get to a person, the more detail you'll be seeing, and that's when you know where to put much detail into. But when drawing bracelets, you can easily put a simple highlight with a highlight brush. I use this a lot when creating jewelry and can guarantee its awesomeness. When to do realism. Well, if you want to do a more realism look, then I suggest understanding color theory more and absolutely use references. I myself am learning it and I must say I give props to those who take their time with it. Absolutely mind-blowing. Can I use blacks as shadows? Of course you can, but because many comic artists use black, I do recommend learning other colors just as well to use as shadows instead of black when trying out new styles. New school and pastels don't use heavy blacks because they're supposed to rely on colors with saturations, which is what makes them unique. But if you are trying to go for a comic book artist or a mangeka thing going on, then I do recommend you can learn heavy blacks. How much detail should I do? Well, again, the closer you are, the more details, and the further away means the less details. Isn't this cheating by stealing other artists' work? No! They publish these on purpose to help other artists out or even sell them for profit. But either way, using the brushes are all legal and not in any way, shape, form stealing. But taking credit for them isn't nice either. Once you get the hang on digital art, you will eventually create your own brushes as I had said before. But it, if you do go, if you are worried about this, you can go read the legal terms on the Clip Studio Paint program and then check it out and see what it actually is trying to tell you. What are the brushes? Are there actually profits? Or are they supposed to be used? You know, things like this. I really do recommend. Now, for most of this, it actually seems to be pretty great. I do recommend that if you want to learn more about jewelry, it really does depend on how much you want to go forth and put your foot into it. If you want to do a more cartoonized style, which is what I usually like to do, then it's going to be fairly easy. But if you want to do a more semi-realistic and realism piece, I really do suggest you'd be using references. Even though they say references might be cheating, it is actually not true. Most tattoo artists and a lot of painters actually use references. I mean. I'm pretty sure Mona Lisa was just, you know, out of nowhere. I'm pretty sure somebody looks like her, and I'm pretty sure they painted a picture of her as a reference. So, either way, if you got to this far, then amazing! Now, I'm going to be talking about Clip Studio Paint for those of you that actually don't know what it is. It is an amazing art program that has over thousands of thousands of customized brushes from other artists around the world, including from Japan, China, Germany, America. It's amazing. It's versatile. And it also has a new update where it was able to allow you to draw your own webtoon comics on here. And it even exports it and it can export it to the main page of webtoon just right off the bat. And it is incredibly amazing and it is so convenient. 
It all, Clip Studio Paint also offers a lot of deals when it comes to brush packs and working on their stuff. There are three programs to it. There is a debut, there is a pro, and then there is the EX. The only difference between the pro and the EX would be some of the tools that you cannot be used and also that you can animate when it comes to EX. Clip Studio Paint also offers a really vi wide amount of stuff. Animation has to be one of them. And in fact, one of the most popular animes, I can't recall the name of it, but I will try to find out, is actually just used on Clip Studio Paint. And it is amazing. It's so, it's so amazing. Clip Studio Paint offer a lot, also offers, ah. Clip Studio Paint also allows you to look around at other artists' work and showcase your own work, which is also great. And it also allows you to download customized brushes that you cannot get from anywhere else. The new update, you're also allowed to get other brushes from like Photoshop or, you know, other places and then put them into your own Clip Studio Paint account, which is amazing. So if you were into Photoshop or you were into Procreate, you can now take those brushes and put them into your Clip Studio Paint, which is amazing. Clip Studio also offers Clippy Points and it also offers um, gold members, which gold coins, which is what you can use to buy more stuff, which is more materials, more backgrounds, more assets, more. Now, I'm pretty sure this is already the end. So if you have actually seen the whole thing, you're going to see that it's actually not that hard to be doing jewelry and you can do jewelry within like 10 minutes. <laughs> the last two minutes, we're just about talking about Clip Studio, but guarantee the more you practice and the more you use your references, I guarantee you the better you'll get. And it's just so easy. Now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy your day slash tonight, and I hope you guys can continue to working and becoming artists yourself. I cannot wait to see everybody else's work. I am so happy. If anything, I do hope that you all start to practice and maintain the colors on your own. Remember, color saturation is important, and line work is too. You don't always have to necessarily use line work, but it depends on your art style. I do wish you all have a good night, stay safe, and remember to always keep your arts up. Bye, everybody.